court. Joining me now is Democratic Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger of Virginia. She is a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and a former CIA officer. Congresswoman, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me, Casey. So I want to start with the big question uh, of the day, which is the specter of impeachment. It's already hit the 2020 trail. There are some Democrats in your conference uh, who have, are already arguing, uh, or in your caucus, excuse me, who are arguing that impeachment should be the next step. Based on what you've read in the Mueller report, do you think that the president committed impeachable offenses? Well, I, I think the important piece to note here is that more than 10 percent of this document that we've had access to so far is redacted um, because of ongoing criminal investigations. So from the perspective of a former CIA case officer and a former law enforcement officer, I want to know what that additional 10 percent uh, of that document says. The other thing that I think is really worth noting here is the minute that the House takes a vote, we've uh, finished with our ability to investigate anything. So any further questions we may have, any desire to have um, anyone else come before the Judiciary Committee or other committees, uh, we've now closed the door on that and pushed the responsibility over to the Senate. And so I, I'm of the opinion that we need more answers uh, before taking a definitive next step. Do you think, uh, you know, to that end, that uh, there would be room for impeachment hearings in the Judiciary Committee? Is that something you'd like to see? I'm, I'm very pleased that um, Chairman Nadler has said that he would like to see uh, Special Counsel Mueller come before the Judiciary Committee. I think that's going to be an important step, if that occurs, to answering a lot of those questions that exist that remain for, for those of us who have read through the report. Um, and so I, I think that that is a, a good next step. At what point do you think the redactions question becomes a moot one? I mean, how long do you think the, the effort to get what remains hidden in this report should go on before you make a political decision about whether to try to move forward on the impeachment question? Well, unfortunately, you know, I, I think the question is more of when will we know enough um, to, to move forward. And it, in my mind, it is not a political decision that we would be making. In my mind, it is a constitutional responsibility decision that we would be making. Um, and so I think because of the fact that any action that the Congress does or does not take is that of a constitutional responsibility, um, it, should, it should be all of our priority to have as much information as possible. And so I, I think to the extent where we can at least get um, some of our questions answered, have an idea of what is the scope of these ongoing investigations? Are there multiple ongoing investigations or is it just one ongoing investigation? Do those ongoing investigations directly involve the president or any of those who are acting on his behalf on a continued basis? You know, even if we don't get the full details, I think answering some of these basic questions about what is the scope of these uh, ongoing criminal investigations would be important to know. Yeah. I'm glad you raised the, the constitutional and, and, and ethical piece of this because, I mean, there is a certain amount of tension, right, between the political imperatives of doing an impeachment proceedings or not and the ethical responsibility of the Congress. How do you balance those two things in your mind? I mean, you come from a swing district. If, in fact, the House were to move forward with impeachment proceedings, that's something that could conceivably lose you your next election. How much are you considering those kinds of considerations against you know, what may, Congress may be permitting the president to get away with if you don't move forward? I have two responsibilities. One is to serve the people of my district and legislate in a way, uh, provide constituent services in a way that can help make people's lives better. And the second most important part of my job is to uphold the constitution of this country. I have now sworn an oath to uphold the constitution three times in my professional career and absolutely nothing is more important to me than that obligation. Fair enough. And let's talk about that. You know, as you're considering your background as a CIA officer, as you read through this report, particularly the sections uh, on collusion, part one uh, of the report that deals with those contacts uh, between Trump associates and Russia and where uh, Mr. Mueller came to the conclusion that there was not a criminal conspiracy. What more as a former intelligence officer do you want to know? What in your view stood out to you? It, what stood out to me was the fact that there was systematic and sweeping efforts to influence the U.S. electorate to hack and um, conduct 
uh, cyber attacks, spear, uh, spear phishing, um, and other means against uh, the Clinton campaign, the Democratic National Committee, the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, and um, the actual elections infrastructure and the private companies that assist with that elections infrastructure. I mean, across the board, we know that a foreign adversary nation took aggressive tactics to try and influence our voters and also um, to try and steal documents successfully in what they were able to do uh, from a major political candidate from our political party and that they attempted to hack into the systems that man uh, our, our voting system. To me, it is absolutely stunning. It is. It should be alarming and, and frightening to every American. You know, our free elections um, are, are the most important piece of our democracy, um, and freedom from attack from a foreign adversary nation should be the, the number one priority that, that we have in, in keeping those elections safe. Yeah. To that very point, uh, Rudy Giuliani, the president's lawyer, was on Meet the Press with Chuck Todd this morning, and he said, quote, there is nothing wrong from taking information from Russians. Do you agree? Should that be acceptable? <laughs> Um, it is wholly unacceptable, and I, I would give a couple examples of why. If in my former job as a CIA case officer um, working in the executive branch, I had taken any documents from a Russian and didn't immediately report that to law enforcement, that would have been a fireable offense. That would have been absolutely um, an, an indication that I was incapable of doing my job in a way that was secure and recognized the, the counter recognizing the counterintelligence threats against me. You know, there's the example that's been talked about recently of Al Gore and George W. Bush, and Al Gore's uh, team was given a briefing book of George W. Bush's debate prep, and they immediately turned it over to the FBI, and the individual who received it recused himself of all efforts to help Al Gore prepare for those debates. You know, I, I think the fact that there's, there's clearly an ethical question about what extents one is willing to go through to win an election. You know, we have an example um, in that prior one where Al Gore made a clear choice, um, and and, and now adding into that discussion the fact that it was a foreign adversary nation providing information and attempting um, to potentially meddle in, in, in an election um, is, is absolutely unbelievable to me. Congresswoman Abigail Spanberger, thank you so much for coming on the program tonight. Uh, I'll see you on Capitol Hill uh, after the conclusion of this two-week recess. Thank you. When Thank we return, you. Democrats running for president are divided over whether to pursue